Good day, everyone. Richard Copperthwaite for Northwest Access TV. Thanks for joining Friday, February 23rd. And I guess it was just yesterday that Governor Phil Scott, I guess on the road, but signed the uh, bill that the legislature kind of hurriedly put together, I guess H850, to undo maybe some of the issues that came up with uh, Act 127. But maybe start there. There's just been so much right. concern, kind of consternation about people kind of freaking out. Hey, we're hearing property taxes may increase 20 percent, school spending up 15 percent, but I guess some of this gets back to Act 127. You it's want to a, maybe start here? You yeah, I would me. start there. You know, I think it, it, it goes to and our... Unintended com consequences are it's worth way more than Way that. more. In St. Albans City, for example, maybe all your towns, uh, St. Albans City starting a reappraisal process, and I'm sure it's got plenty of company. Yep, yep. Well, there's a lot of towns that want to reappraise. Right. There's a lot of towns in Vermont this year, and this is some of the compounding efforts. Yeah. Um, but the biggest one is the change in property values that we've seen since the pandemic. Right. Um, and the CLA is a three-year average, and last year was the first real big jump in, uh, or downward, huh. I shouldn't say jump, but decrease in CLA. Huh. Um this is the second, and we'll have another one next year as well. Oh, really? So, yep, so there's another one to go. I because mean, it, it is a three-year, and there's such a change, as we all know, in our property values okay. here in, in St. Albans area and across Vermont. One quick way, before Act 60, Act 68 came into play, was education funding, was it at that point something that – you know, an average person had a better feel for understanding, or was it even complicated? Has it so always there, been complicated? Before that was called the foundation formula, but not okay. all schools uh, receive funding on the foundation formula. Huh. And it was such a minimal part that it didn't really uh, provide that equal access to an opportunity for learning for yeah. all students across yeah. Vermont. So okay. that's really what Act 60 and Act 68, it's actually one of the longest standing <clears throat> funding laws in Vermont's history and really? across the nation. Really? Yeah, it, it was it was enacted and put in place hmm. in 1998. It was put in place, and I think it was 2001 or 2002. I could be wrong. But early 2000s that it was put in place, and it was yeah. there for over 20 years. So huh. that's, so a that's pretty, pretty, pretty long. That's a pretty stable funding system. Do other states, I'm sure you've got a feel for some, at least yeah. some other states. Are other states also typically education funding, pretty complicated situations? Or are some states not, in, I don't know how many other states you're so, aware of? Well, yeah, now I'm aware of uh, the northern New England ones yeah. in Massachusetts. Yeah. Um, and, and, well, probably all of New England. Uh, and then I know of other states a little bit. Uh, New England, we have a unique approach, especially uh, northern New England, New Hampshire, huh. Vermont, and yeah. Maine, and the way in which we fund our school systems. Really? And we fund it heavily on the property tax, right. and there's very little centralized <clears throat> control over the funding that what schools elect to fund. Huh. Interesting. And where in – there's actually – there there was just a ruling in New Hampshire last year on their Supreme – by their Supreme Court that they didn't have equal resources going to schools. So oh. they're have, trying to figure out a funding formula in New Hampshire. Um, Maine's about the same place we are. It's a little different. Um, and then we look at southern New England. A lot of it gets tied to the municipality. Hmm. So the school budget goes through the municipality. Yeah. But they have a school district with – they have some combined school districts across municipalities. Um, but that's – in in most and especially the bigger uh, cities and towns in Massachusetts, Rhode Island, and Connecticut, they have to go. They first go to their board. The board approves it. Then they have to go to their city council and really? have the city council approve it. And they, so the city council would get the final say on that. They or? would. Now in Massachusetts, they a, a few years back they passed what's called Proposition Two and a Half. Right. That right. said, every right. all municipal services could increase two and a half percent unless right. the local voters overrode that by two thirds majority oh, so two, to two allow thirds. to allow it to go through. I'm a Massachusetts native. Yeah, that certainly sounds familiar. Yeah. So, right. um, boy, that's, two thirds vote. That's not a that's easy vote to get. That's not an easy vote. But you yeah. got to. I do. I have talked with superintendents, and they're like, "Yep, we have to yeah. do some work, but we're if we have a good reason, and the public yeah. feels we have a good reason, we yeah. go for it." So huh. back to Act 127. Yeah. Act 127. So 127 was um, was approved by the legislature and signed by the governor in 2022. And what it really did was to try to look at how are we funding schools based on student need. In Act 60 and 68, there were factors in there for students that were in poverty. So we use free and reduced lunch as a measure. Mm -hmm. uh, students that English is a second language. Uh, different grade level configuration. So you would get a, fa a multiplicative factor 
on that student to say how many students you have. And then at the end, let's say there were 90,000 students in Vermont, yeah. they would multiply it by a percentage so we had 90,000 what we called equalized students. Good. That, <clears throat> those fact, weighting factors that were done under Act 60, there was no research behind them. So Good. no one ever sat down and said, what's it really cost to fund to fund an education for a student that might come from poverty or a student that might come, that's a pre-K student. Mm. And so what happened in the legislature in 2021 asked the University of Vermont to conduct a study of what it actually cost. Mm. So for example, from their research, it costs about twice as much money or twice as much more resources to educate a student that's in poverty than one that's not. Really, trying twice as much. Twice as much. A student that is an English language learner is, is almost uh, one and a half times more. Wow. So they reestablished these weights. And what 127 said was, we are going to stop counting students as equalized. We're going to, this is what's been in the news about weighted students. Yeah. And so we have a whole new way of counting students in Vermont. We, huh. We, we joke about this all the time, but it's actually pretty serious, is that you can count the kids that are enrolled in the school, but now we have a weighted way to measure them as well. Huh. And that has, doesn't have to total up to the total population. School enrollment in the state is roughly? It's around 83,000. And, and that stands significant. significant keeps it keep, going, keeps keeps going, going down. down. But I, w I want to say really strongly for yeah. our area, not, Franklin not County, yeah. not here. In fact, are you stable or going even going We're up? We're stable till a few tick ups. Like if I look over the past five years, it's yeah. you know up and down 1%. Pretty, pretty, pretty stable. Pretty, and, that, uh, and that's really attractive. Um, one of the things I say very publicly is, uh, um, this is my second superintendency, and one of many yeah. factors that brought me to St. Albans. Yeah. Uh, it's a great community, but is that it's a stable school system. It's got stable student population. And there are, again, a lot of places in the state that can, can't say, my, I'm saying that. My previous superintendency wow. in central Vermont, in yeah. seven years, we lost 150 kids. Right, really? And it, was a, it started wow. as a 1,600 student population. We yeah. were down to 1,450. Really? Yeah. Where, where was that? I was at uh, Washington Central, which is a U32 district. Okay. So it's just... It's, it's like happening East, Mont East Montpelier, East Montpelier, like that. East Montpelier Callis, Interesting. Uh, Middlesex. Wow. Yeah. So you're happy to be in a, a oh, stable, very, stable very, it, it, Yes, it, it makes it's a lot easier to work oh. in a stable system. Yeah. And, um, you know, there we were having to we were having to reduce and figure out how can we and pull programs out from students. Oh. So interesting. Yeah. So again, so so Act 127, the latest thing on the book. Yeah, so and, the 127 yeah. is a, so as a new way for waiting, and yeah. then within it, it had caps because they didn't want districts right. that saw a big decrease in their what would eventually become their state aid um, because of this new way of counting students. They said, okay, if there's going to be more than a five percent increase on the tax rate because of the pupil pieces, yeah. we're going to cap the tax rate at 5%. Interesting. And at the same time, they said, if your student, your spending per weighted pupil goes up more than 10%, mm. you will have, um, you will have a review by a committee of superintendents and business managers, which mm. will finally become the secretary's determination on whether you get the tax break or not. So there was this That's buffer. Right. It's, it's two different counting method is, yeah. methodologies, but <clears throat> it's really between the 5% and 10%. Mm. And then what got has been in the news this past month a lot is that stu districts were able to take advantage of that differential. Just saying, hey, if they're going to give us a 5% uh, cap on our, we might as well throw in, hey, we, we could use a new building or something. We might as well throw Wait, in yeah. this other stuff. Yeah, I would, a building would be a little strong. But a little strong. You know, it, I, I, I do want to say for the districts, that there are capital needs. We have a, we have a $6 billion capital need. I know Emerson need. Lynn, the uh, editor, emeritus of The Messenger, yeah. has had a number of stories, and that's yeah. a figure, I guess, he, yep. six, six billion. Six billion dollar billion. building need. Building in, needs. In Vermont. Wow. So it's not million, it's billion. It's well, I think huge. The, I think the overall state budget's about nine. It's almost up two yeah. thirds of the overall state budget, right. I think. Right, and that we, wow, that was the legislature back in uh, the late two thousands. Stopped funding building construction. Yeah, I've been around really for a long people. time. I can in my earlier years, sure. If there was a, a building project, the state would be funding a pretty good hunk right. of a right. significant hunk right. of that. So and they, and they do none of none nothing. of that now. Nothing. Just up to the local districts. Yeah. Wow. So when districts are saying, hey, I have, we have a 5% cap, we can put other things in there, yeah. and 
use it as money for our district. Yeah. Um, and so some districts took advantage of that. Yeah. Maple Run was, was one that not. No, we not Maple Run. Yeah, no, I asked the board what they wanted to do, yeah. and they said, we can't ethically go there. Uh, it, it, we just don't think that's right. right. Um, and that's been, and I totally agreed with them, but I wanted to make sure we had <clears throat> the discussion at the board meeting. Yeah. And they said, no, we know others are doing that. Okay, no. you're fine. A number of school boards, districts, obviously, uh, went the other way with that. Yes, I don't. Yeah. I don't know how many. Don't know how many. I don't know how many. Uh, I, I know enough of what I've heard through the rumor mill, but nothing that I can. But enough that certainly got a lot of attention. That seems like all I've been hearing about for the last month or so. Yeah, and so that brought around H, eight fifty. H eight fifty. What you you spoke about at the beginning of the show here, yeah. and that what that did was remove those caps and say it very put in a tax reduction mechanism that's almost exactly the same as Act 46 huh. when we had the merger incentives. Huh. So, uh, oh, it, who could forget Act 46? Yeah, huh. well, it did a great job for Maple Run. I think, I, I think we're, we're I know, and I'll show you some graphs that, later on. That did on. work out, that worked out great for Maple Run. It was again. great, yeah, and I can show, I'll be showing you some graphs later okay. when we talk about that yeah. budget. Um, but with Act 40, with, sorry, with Act H850, what it was gonna do is say, Maple Run has a 3% decline in pupil enrollment huh. from the old way of counting to okay. the new way of counting. Even though the actual number of students Dude, is actual, about the same. Almost about the same. I really? mean, within 25 kids. Interesting. So the way all that worked, we lost about 3%. So what they're saying is for every percentage that you lost, you'll have a cent decrease on your tax rate. Huh. And so we will have a under the law, the... A uh, bill just signed by the governor yeah. yesterday. Yeah. We will have a three cent de decrease on this year's tax rate. That's but there's a new, but there's some other factors that have changed yeah. that change all the calculations. And I can get into that later. Yeah. There are some, there, the highest I saw on the list of, of towns that were getting tax break, there's one town, or I should say school district, um, that has a 28 wow. cent decrease because it has a 28 really? percent change from last year to this year really and that's what they were wow. trying to protect for them but this mechanism huh. and then it, it steps it down in five years so you get 80 percent of that tax break next budget cycle huh. for fy 26 six 60 percent 40 percent 20 zero wow. so and another part of that of h 850 was uh i guess the governor hoping the part of the uh bill he just signed uh School boards, if they wanted, school districts could put off their budget vote for a month no later than April 15th. Yeah. And when I saw that, I said, boy, is that going to do? I mean, you folks have been working for months on your right. budgets, and I guess the hope from the governor will go back and take out all that extra spending you didn't need or whatever. But do you think many, do you know? Well, some, I'm, I guess, no, I don't think anybody in Franklin County, you folks are. I haven't heard of anyone in that. Franklin County doing it. I'm pretty so close contact town, with my colleague superintendents sure. here in the county. So still votes, school budget votes on town meeting day. Still on town meeting day. Our, we talked about it at the Maple Run board as huh. soon as we knew the bill was coming about. Yeah. Um, but it was, you know, we put together the best budget we could. Yeah. We didn't put in any one-time spending factors in there yeah. uh, or capital needs. We do have some capital in there, but it's very, it's very minor. Um, so I guess the hope for the governor probably or for, or for the folks who wanted that provision that some school districts who did put a lot of extra things kind yeah. of in the budget will go back and maybe take out the, quote, extras yeah. or something? I, I, Is that the I, hope? Well, the, I don't know that I would call them extras because I think they're needed. And a no, lot I don't of mean to say that. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, but it's just, it's, it's yeah. you know, it goes back to that $6 billion right. facilities right. problem. Right. So people were saying, I've got to attack this facility problem. Yeah. I've got leaky roofs. They're leaking right, right. in where kids are learning. Yeah. Yeah. And I've got to put a new roof on. So if this yeah. gives me the chance to do it, yeah. I'm going to do it. So I actually I don't begrudge them at all. They're looking to take care of their school districts. Yeah. And um, and it was a way of doing it without increased tax rates. Right. So you're not not, not clear how many. Um, I don't know how many. Yeah. How many did that? Presumably a few. But again, nobody right. apparently in Franklin County anyway. Not that I know of. Yeah. Not that I've heard of. So. Interesting. Should we get, um, you want to keep going on that or should we start Well, I think that gives a, a, what I would say. Or it um, sounds like we're almost up to the present Yeah, we're here. pretty much up at the present day. <clears throat> I, I would say, and I'll show you later on as well, yeah. um, the difference between before, uh, with Act 127, without H850, yeah. the tax rate. So we look at something, and I'm going to show some figures on this, but the educational tax rate before CLA is applied. Yeah. And now with H850, 
is yeah. literally a tenth of a penny tax rate difference from really, O'Reilly. Yeah. Hardly anything. Hardly anything. And I think right. that's because of the way we built our budget. Yeah. And that, um, you know, we, we did it based on what our students need for next year. Yeah. Um, and, that, and I think that's the good work that the administration and the board work together on to do. Probably should know it, and I'm sure most folks out there watching us know this well, but uh, Maple Run Unified School District, we're talking St. Albans City, St. Albans Town LMs, BFA, Northwest Technical Center, yeah. and, Fe and Fairfield. That's correct. Got everybody. You got everybody. You got all five yeah, of them. Interesting. Yeah. And the number of students in uh, Maple Run? About, about 2,750 students, approximately. 2,750. Yeah. Um, and yeah. again, pretty pretty stable numbers. Pretty stable numbers. We we are usually right around 900, give or take a few at the high school, and huh. the city schools usually around 650 to 700, and yeah. the towns between seven and 750, and Fairfield stays right around 250. Yeah, yeah. One one question while I think of it, I wouldn't have thought of this. Uh, I go to the Ollie lectures, the weekly lectures in St. Albans. Yeah. It's uh, kind of through UVM, Osher Lifelong Learning yep. Institute. And the person next to me at the, actually Dominic Cloud was oh, the speaker. Dominic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know Dominic. And he was talking pretty much the, uh, his whole time about TIFs, tax increment financing. And th that development tool has been, as you know, a, been beautiful pretty much a key yeah. to oh, yeah. St. Albans' downtown revitalization. But the lady next to me maybe had a good question because that, hits into the education fund, and she said, Richard, do you know where our TIFs, kind of one of the issues with uh, all the controversy about the education fund? I said, that's a great question. I'll mention that to uh, the superintendent. And I said, I wouldn't think that'd be a big factor, but again, the TIFs, and that's kind of a complicated thing too, but that is kind of taking some money out of the education fund. So then if we go to the education fund, one of the things that we has been happening increasingly yeah. over the past... I don't know, let's just say the past five to ten years, yeah. is there's been more requirements of the education fund than there used to be. Huh. None of these things are necessarily a bad thing looking at it overall, but when you look at the edu education fund, yeah. um, I'd want to go back and quote what the total of <laughs> millions of dollars is, but there's quite a bit. Yeah. Um, you know, universal meals. We want universal meals right. for our kids. Yeah. But I believe that was a $29 million I was going to say high 20s, yeah. yeah. Not, uh, in, not, insignificant not insignificant money. Not yeah. insignificant. Um, and it's re that will really change how the tax rate's calculated. Yeah. Um, the PCB mandate uh, that we're going through in all our schools and testing and right. dealing with that. Right. Uh, kind of in the wake out. of the Burlington High School situation, the, yep, giving yep, that a lot of yep. attention. And there's a lot of other high schools that are, <clears throat> yeah. not just high schools, but a lot of the schools that are getting involved, that have seen issues. And An issue in Maple Run particularly or unknown we have, at this point? Uh, we have, um, we have th three of our schools have been tested, three yeah. of our buildings, our campuses, I should say. Yeah. Um, and we had small amounts in city and in Fairfield. And yeah. in town, we're right at the, we're right below the borderline. Yeah. Um, and you know the PCBs have been were prevalent in construction from about 1960 to yeah. 1979. Wow. Um, so we're we the, everything's safe. I want to say that really loud and clear. Everything's yeah. safe in the schools. It actually was in places where we had those samples that went over the limits, um, and they're over the lowest limits because they're for pre-K children. Yeah. We serve pre-K children, so they're really small. The limits are graduated based on your age, yeah. and. Um, they're in non-instructional, non-student areas, and which has Good. actually been really lucky for us because many wow. other schools have had to shut down spaces to really? students wow. in, the, in the state of Vermont. Interesting. So, so come some more added things have just gotten kind right. of right. So that so yeah. there are other examples that I don't have off the top of my head yeah. that are hitting. The, but those are the, two that come right to mind. Yep. So under the it's free lunches and you get yeah yeah. And he's gonna get a drink here. That, that's fine. So yeah. So again, just a, a lot of numbers here. But with that high 20, say 29 million. Yep. So all schools free free lunches now. Nobody. What is breakfast? Is there breakfast too? Breakfast too. Breakfast, breakfast and too. lunch. Yep. So it sounds like a, I mean, a commendable thing to do. But I mean, there's a pri price tag with it. Right. Did I mean, you think that was? Were you happy to see that, or mixed emotions, or not, or? Mixed emotions is probably Just, like I, I mean, I money am there comes into play. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, so he, here's what I think is what every board and administrator in the state of Vermont yeah. deals with. We want to do everything we can for every kid. Sure. You know, our one thing's about is always said about educators is like, you know, we have big hearts. And mm -hmm. um but that comes with the the community's ability to pay. Yeah. And so we more and more schools have been taking on the social services yeah. um for the state. 
And that's been either a direct or indirect uh, saying that we should do this. And we know if a kid comes to school hungry yeah. or experienced trauma or there's drug addiction happening in the home, yeah. that that kid's not ready to learn. And so without that kid being ready to learn, yeah. we have to provide services to get them ready to learn. Yeah. And so while some service not – we are the only social service that has a mandate. We, we can't say no to the kid. Mm. Education can't say no to that. We have to do it. Yeah. How long the free lunches? Is that for just a set number of years or is it I, year to year? I or? do not re remember. I know it's, not, a set, not it's, a set, it's not forever, and I can't remember if it's just this year or a couple yeah. of years. I'd have to go back and look at the list. Well, it'll be interesting when that issue comes up again to see. Hey, great, great well, thing to do, but can we afford doing that? I saw uh, Senator Baruth from Chittenden County yeah. on the uh, news as H850 was getting passed. And, and, as he, did I. and he was saying, you know, we need to go back and look at a lot of these different things. He said, I think he used the word like, groundbreaking or something. We need to come up with some significant things uh, with uh, education costs um, soaring so much right. or whatever. That and, he, and looking at programs and, yeah, what, and we've, programs. what we've asked for. So you've got to yeah. look at both the requirements and the cost yeah. because you're not going to get you're not going to get something for nothing. That doesn't happen anywhere I know in the world. So yeah. there's costs associated. Yeah. Yeah. Just budget wise, uh, again, and I should probably note the school board situation yeah, Let's for talk Maple Run. And again, you have a couple of folks, a um, couple of kind of empty seats, but yeah. Jessica Frost, an incumbent running for re, re election. Re oh, well, she wasn't for, elected before. She was not elected. Appointed, so but now running for an election. Running for an election for a three okay. year spot. For St. Albans Town. Yep. Nilda Ganella French, who I certainly know, long time board, board member, chair. long time chair. Yep. And Carly Gunderson. Yep. Uh, running for the, I guess, two seats in St. Albans City. That's correct. But again, a vacancy in Fairfield for one school director yep. and St. Albans Town, the other seat of it. So a couple of vacancies. Yep. That'll be a case when the board after the election will be able to appoint yeah, folks. Hopefully they can find a couple of good people. Right. Or there could be some write-ins. They've actually no, could be said that if we can get thir okay. someone get 30 write-ins so write across the three towns. Okay. Okay. So that might happen. That would be great. Hearing any uh, write-in candidates out there? I haven't heard any. But I that might, heard. might be the case. That might be the case. Boy, it just sounds like there. I mean, you know, I, I guess I'm not surprised. I'm running into that mostly covering municipal things. There's certainly just towns around here. Not everybody. They're open seat. Highgate's got an open seat right. on the select board. We're seeing that. I mean, what I I'm sure hearing, a trend. Yeah, that's it's a trend in yeah. government, whether it's municipal or school board yeah. in general. Yeah. Yeah. And I hear that from my colleagues, superintendents around the state. Yeah. Yeah. Boy, I mean, tough, tough jobs. Tell you, tell you about it. You're the, you're the big boss being the superintendent. But, uh, <laughs> I like to think I'm, I'm less of the boss man. Yeah. That's a joke in my office, <laughs> and more of, hey, let's, let's coordinate what we're doing here. Yeah. But no, it sounds like I give, I give anybody credit who's doing any jobs like that. But maybe yeah. especially school directors. It just yeah. sounds like a, not the easiest situation. You want to dive into let's maple, go into the maple, maple run, run budget. Yeah. And you know, Alan Cunningham, uh, Alan, our great producer, yeah. is going to help us. Yeah, here. Alan, you've got some slides there. So I'm going to do a little bit of uh, school finance. Yeah. conversation here and so a little bit we'll just we'll, if you could go to that first slide on current the next one there we go um, and I don't know Alan if you can go back one that would be great right there and um, so our current budget that's on the uh, ballot is for seventy six million two hundred thirty two thousand four hundred eleven dollars and up from about a sixty nine million dollar yep. plus budget yep. so we're up we're about 9.8 percent correct me if i'm wrong i certainly pay attention to what happens on town meeting day we'll have coverage here that night yeah. I, i'm not aware of maple i don't think a maple run budget has ever been defeated as well it maple runs or? in our ninth year so, so we I have, think we've, in we've those nine years support for the i guess community. i guess this year not just for maple run other school budgets will be getting a lot of attention this year yep. but anyway yep so, so with that um what I'll jump down to is I talked about weighted. We, we then subtract our local revenues and we get a figure it's called Ed spending. And that's what drives the tax rate, yeah. which is up 12%. So when you hear the governor, we're right on average for education spending. That's on average. Around that prediction around 12%. Okay. Um, and that's 57,000, 200, sorry, 57,207,352. Wow. I can go through all the calculations, but we have what's happened is when we look at on row five there, our education spending. Can you go back one, Alan? Right there. Yeah, stay, just stay on that slide. Um, when we look at our education spending from this year to last year, yeah, we're spending for this year. We're spending fourteen thousand two hundred and seventy eight dollars per weighted student. Mm -hmm. That's down. 
fifteen hundredths of a percent, or down about twenty dollars from, from this right. current year. Down. So we're actually going to spend less next year with that increasing budget. So that's what that's what's hard for people to understand. Yeah. Is like actually we're going to spend less per kid. Yeah. The, what really is there's a last figure that's called the yield rate. I'm going to get a little education and finance technical here. It's fine. This is the figure that's called it's called a dollar yield. So if they took the all the school spending in the state of Vermont and divided it by the grand list and the number of students, yeah. how, much, how much money would we raise? And so the legislature always sets this in May. It's the last thing they do before they adjourn. Huh. And so we're using estimates to talk about this. And it's right now, at, when we published this, it was at 9,452. That was in, in 1st of January. Hmm. I can tell you with Act H850 coming out, hmm. it's going to be at 9,775. Hmm. If people pull money out from their budgets, it will go up even further. Hmm. Of any factor that's on this page that influences the tax rate the most, it's what that yield is. Because hmm. then you divide what your spending per student is divided by the yield. And we have no control of that. We could decrease Maple Run's budget back to this year's spending or previous year's spending. We would barely move that yield because we're a small piece of the overall education spending yeah. in Vermont. Yeah. So it's Franklin County being again I'm talking the whole county about what eight percent of the state's population. I think, so obviously I think something like that. Yeah, we just have a yeah. portion of that. We just have a portion of that. I guess Franklin County finally. I was hoping to see a story, but for years I'd be talking about Franklin County close to fifty thousand. I think at one point I think we're just over fifty thousand, but yeah. about fifty thousand yeah. folks yeah. in the whole county. So before this is a the projection that's. Uh, if I can go back one, back to that last slide just for a second there, Alan. I know I stayed really long on this, but okay. our, down at the bottom, it says cap tax rate is $1.43. That will be the same tax rate with the new H850. It would be $1.43, and this is called the education tax rate before CLA. Yeah. So now, um, Alan, we can move to the next slide. Great. Thank you. And so... So the, so the 850 is really not affecting. It's not affecting Maple, Maple Run, Run at, all. at all. Oh, and that was a okay. six. That's almost a seven cents increase on what we call our education tax rate. Yeah. And then we apply the common level appraisal CLA. Yeah. So as you see up on the slide, you'll see that the we're looking at a CLAs of 64 um, percent in the city, almost 80 percent in the town, and the fair and Fairfield at 109 percent. Fairfield, um, I can, has dropped almost, uh, almost twenty percent from last year in their yield. The city dropped seven um, percent, and the town dropped nine percent. Hmm. So the CLA is our biggest factor in what we're seeing happen to the tax rate. So what that once we multiply that through with what the adjusted, and down at the bottom is what we want to be looking at, the adjusted tax rate. There's two. There's one if we didn't have the caps, and one if we did have the caps. And even though we don't have the caps, the figures are the same. So the St. Albans City will be seeing a proposed tax rate of $2.23, town $1.79, and Fairfield $1.31, which are representing anywhere from a 15% tax increase in the town mm -hmm to a 17% increase in the city to a 24% increase on the tax rates in, in Fairfield. Uh -huh. But I want to give you some history on this. Yeah. So if we can go forward, Alan, to the line graph, you can keep going right there. One of the things people say to me, well, wow, you were at a $1.36 education tax rate last year. And even though the CLA really jumped the tax rate in the city, yeah. we can't compare year to year because of CLA. The only thing we can compare is what's happened to the tax rate, the education tax rate before CLA. So the board gave me direction back in November to work with my leadership team colleagues to develop a budget that was within our historical range that we've used before. So the lowest we've ever had for a tax rate in Maple Run is $1.36. Yeah. And that was last year's educational tax rate. Really? Literally, the year before was the highest we ever had. Which was a dollar forty nine. So that was a year before. That was a year before. That's FY twenty two. Hmm. So we've had, or sorry, two years before two, FY twenty. So this this current year, a dollar thirty six. Yeah. So 
we went up to a dollar forty three. And so you'll see that that's represented as the lower lowest green line on the graph. The upper the next green line is if we adjusted all the tax rates to two thousand twenty three dollars. So if you look if you look at two thousand FY twenty four, you'll see a dollar thirty six and a dollar thirty six for both the dark green line and the light green line. You'll see all the way, if we adjust that for, as a, any economist would, for 2023 dollars, our tax rate in FY17 would have been $1.79. Oh, yeah. um, so if we look at this as an economist would, <clears throat> we are lowering that cost quite a bit. Yeah. The uppermost line is what's been happening in CLA and the city. So you can see it was pretty constant. Our tax rates stayed pretty constant, but the past three years we've had a steep decline. And that's happening um, in all three towns. I just yeah. chose to take the city on this one. Yeah. Right. And then, um, Alan, if you can go ahead, the next slide, and then that's the one I want you to stop on, right there. So here's another, no, go back right there. Sorry, the, the one with the, the column graph. Thank you. Alan, you're doing good work. You're doing out. great because you're doing a remote. Alan's a key guy around yeah, here. Yeah, he's doing great in the production booth. <laughs> so this graph, the total of the orange and blue columns on any fiscal year represents the total tax rate. The blue is the portion that the board has control over, wow. which is how much is the tax rate? You saw it in a line graph in the previous. How much is, the line, how much is what the school is contributing to that tax rate? The orange is the common level of appraisal, which comes from the, the factor that is what your real property value is versus the assessed value. Uh, yeah. So you can see as our assessments have gotten out of whack, what's happened to our tax rate uh, and where that's coming from. Uh, it's coming from CLA. That's right. I I, and, I, and to most voters, and I, I agree with them, yeah. <clears throat> stop talking to me about tech and technicalities. Yeah. This is... This is, it's all the ed school tax rate, right? Yeah. And it is, but the board doesn't have control over that CLA. Yeah, I mentioned St. Albans City. I'm a resident of St. Albans City. I know they've started a reappraisal process. Yep. Is that St. Albans Town in Fairfield as well? Fairfield just did one last year. Uh, did, did and uh, I don't know about the town. Okay. I haven't had a chance to talk to the select board. Okay. About it. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> there, and the, yeah. the circuit breaker for it is when you go below 80%, and the town just went right. below 80% this year. Right. Yeah. When? Um, and, and is staffing needs anything much new in that budget in terms so, yeah, of that, staffing? That, that's or? a great question. People have asked us, um, like, what's new for staff? Yeah. We have one new staff position. One, one new staff. Now, we've taken some out. We've added some back in. A um, lot of the news has been around um, the uh, uh, school systems losing the federal funds due to the pandemic. Yeah. Um, but we did a great job working with the board, and they said so. And last year they put – a put some positions in back into the local budget from that, but they said, we want you to really try to find expenditures that can be done when the grant's done. Yeah. Um, I will tell you, we shifted some of our programs because of it from what we've learned. We have a great high school recovery yeah. program going on in-house uh, that's helping students enter back into high school, um, yeah. and those positions are in, and they were initially funded by ESSER. But we had planned it. We, we would have done that program anyway without ESSER. We had yeah. students that were dropping out of high school. We needed to help them come back in. Uh, well, I guess one question while I think of it, talking to um, periodically interviewing St. Albans Mayor Tim, Tim Smith, yeah. always saying, boy, we just have to, kids, we have to just give them more options about trades. Not everybody's going to college, obviously. And, and again, I mean, good luck if you need a plumber or electrician. Right, I mean, good, right. It's tough. Is that, is that getting more? Uh, it sounds like a, a very good point. Is that getting more attention at the tech center? Has that changed much, uh, Bill? Well, we, we, we have about 300 students that use the tech center. 80% yeah. of them come from BFA, the other 20% from MVU. So MVU, some of that too. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, it's, it's, I see it really fortunate, and it's a real uh, plus for our district, yeah. is that most tech centers in the state of Vermont service four, five, six even more high schools. Really? We service two. Just two. And so to be able to do things and coordinate is yeah. so much easier. Huh. Um, I would say that our Buildings Trades program has close to 100 kids in it. Really? It's uh, booming. Um, our kids, we have some great success stories. Um, I know one of our local auto dealerships has one of our yeah. 
graduates from two, yeah, right. three or four years ago who's now heading up their mechanic. No, job. another another job that you hear about. Right, now. right. And so um, kids are doing that, yeah. and then kids are making choices, and yeah. as they should. And so Tim and I, uh, our mayor Tim Smith and I have talked about that quite a bit. I bet. And um, I said, "Yep, but you got to let the kids. The kids have to be interested in it." Yeah. And then they are, and I, I tell this story all the time, and. I've seen it almost every graduating class. Um, There's a couple kids that are in a tech program at the same time taking college level courses, either through CCB or AP classes, yeah. and going on to some very prestigious colleges, um, and so and doing really well. So they're mixing both the authentic learning, and then one of our um, that's really true for our health services. And our social human services programs. Um, I, I shouldn't just pick them out because it happens in all of our programs. Yeah. Engineering, uh, building trades. I mean, the kids just find great. They they're getting the best of both worlds. Uh, what percentage of uh, kids coming out of uh, BFA go on to college, Bill? I don't have that exact percentage. Over over fifty or well. Uh, we're over fifty, but I don't think we're we're not up in the seventy five percent. Interesting. Yeah. So there, I mean, obviously tons of kids who are not going on to college. They aren't. And, you know, I hear it more and more. I have a, my youngest daughter is a senior. No, right, at, B, so at BFA. Not at BFA. Oh, not BFA. I, I live, live in another district. But, okay. Um, you know, mm -hmm. she's even... She's college bound. Will she she's be college, college bound? bound? She's college bound. Yeah. But she, you know, she, we have the discussion about cost. Yeah. And she knows. Boy. And 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 uh, she's good, little, good thing to be talking about, I guess. Yeah, well, I'm glad she's a little more frugal than her sister. So my her, her older sisters, because no, no, yeah, college. She, in fact, my kid's taking a gap. Yeah, happens to be in Egypt right now. My yeah. one, my one kid doing an internship yeah. with a, but he's a gap year. But yeah, col well, college they, costs are just seem yeah. just seem unbelievable. Well, as you know, Richard, I was a high school teacher and done high school administration. And right. I think kids have to be ready to go. Yeah, and. Tim, Tim, Tim Smith and I have talked about if a kid wanted to take a gap year and work here yeah. and they could live with their parents, yeah. they could make quite a bit of savings yeah. for college later on. Not a, that's not a And there's plenty idea. of jobs right here in Franklin County. Yeah. So, yeah, and which I think is a great thing to point out. Yeah. Is there more budget stuff? or are you No, the other thing I want to yeah. add is one of the questions. I have another we, 20 minutes, so whatever yeah. you want to jump into. Well, what I wanted to add is one of the questions we've been getting, and this was because of the cap, so this went away, but so it's a little old news. Yeah. but. You know, people have said, well, what if you went back to start cutting that 5%? Yeah. How much would that take? And it would take $3.2 million to do it, which um, is the equivalent of 31 teaching positions. Yeah, so I guess I saw that in your report in yeah. the flyer. Wow. Yeah. And so if we want to get back to an education tax rate that's the same as last year, yeah. uh, which is that dollar thirty six that I talked about, yeah. we would have to cut $5.8 million. $5.8 million. And that would be oh. the equivalent of 56 teaching positions out oh. of 390 across the district. All right, almost 400 teaching positions? Teaching, our full staff is 580. Wow. So oh, sorry, full staff full, full 580. Full staff 80, but of teacher certified positions. Interesting. And then if you want, if our, um, if we needed to go to cut to where we, there was no effect from the CLA, yeah. so it's basically the same tax rate, yeah. we'd have to cut $13.5 million, which would be the equivalent of 130 teaching positions, wow. basically a third of our staff. Wow. This is the predicament when we say we, this is a, we, you said to me earlier, this is a complex yeah. system. Yeah. It's extremely complex. Yeah. A complex system, yeah. that word doesn't even do justice to it. Yeah. Staff, speaking of staffing, I think if you go back a number of years, there'd be a teaching uh, vacancy. There'd be you know, tons of people applying. Are, are you able? Are you able to get? If you have vacancies, is it tougher to get uh, good it, good people to fill those it's vacancies? Hard, it's harder to get good people. Yeah, we've been lucky and have filled most of our positions. Yeah, um, with those we have filled, we fill them with highly qualified staff. Yeah, uh, right now we have open about twenty positions across the district. Really, that fluctuates. Yeah. Uh, between support positions and their, I don't remember the number, I want to say somewhere between six and ten yeah. of certified teachers that are required to have a license. Yeah. Um, and so we're always looking for people who want to come and work at Maple Run. My yeah. HR director, Becky Grino, has been out job fairs, all that. Um, really? But we're down custodians, we're down paraeducators, we're yeah. down in fact, uh, licensed in, staff. In kind of in a former life, my background around here is journalism for yeah. a long time, but I did log a couple of years as a para at SATEC uh, yeah. when my kid was born. I figured maybe I better get a little better handle <laughs> on kids who was uh, 
eye-opening experience. It's a lot of work. I, I mean, the behavioral issues kind of blew my mind. I had I had no clue. Yeah. I think I've always had pretty good impressions of teachers, and boy, it, it went up after my two years here. Yeah, our teachers are doing amazing work. I yeah. will say on the side, and this, maybe this is something we come back and talk about yeah. another time, Richard, but we're seeing from the pandemic, as everyone heard, there was a learning loss yeah. and behavioral issues came from it. And then uh, we just pretty significant, pretty I would guess. Very significant. Yeah. Um, I don't want to make light of them, but I, I will yeah. be honest and say they're, they're very significant. Yeah. Our teachers are doing, our whole staff, not just our teachers, I should say the whole staff is doing amazing work in Maple Run. Yeah. We just reviewed this past Wednesday with the board um, some of our student data. Yeah. We are seeing, and we put in some real interventions for uh, literacy and brought on a new program to support our curriculum. Um. And that's in the pre-K-8 grades and we're starting to see some real effects of how the teachers have been working so hard to implement that new program yeah. and the jump on student progress so it's really yeah. it, we're just at the initial steps of that um we had a two-year implementation plan and this is the first year so from fall to winter um i don't i didn't bring the percentages with me and so i don't want to misquote anything yeah. but um we saw some great some great changes for our students that's right so the the teachers are doing the right thing as you said it's a really hard job yeah um yeah it really is it, and it's a thankless job mm. frankly for yeah but they're they're doing they are working their they're working really hard staffing wise again are there some positions that weren't filled or yep. you so you did you say about 20 or so about 20 positions aren't filled really so Th these aren't regular teachers or including regular some are regular teachers really? uh, i can tell you i know we have a special education position that's open really? we had a director for the high school special ed that stayed open yeah. um i'd have to go back and look at the list for after that yeah. uh, as i said there's about six to nine of those were licensed positions that we yeah. need some of them we were able to fill with December grads, um, but what it's taken is, again, back to the hard work of the staff, yeah. they're doubling up their efforts. Yeah. And, and that gets tiring. Yeah, I'm going back about 20 years in my case, a couple of years at Saytech as a para, yeah. but my friends would say, Richard, you're doing a para, para educator. When I was in school, there were no para. Why, why, why do you need paras these days? It just sounds like they're, and you get into that a bit, it just sounds like there's uh, more and more kids just have have issues in jumping into school or, or not well that's maybe a pretty complex yeah, that's a complex I, and i'd want to go get andrea racic and yeah. alexis hoyt who do the, a lot of that support with kids and, yeah. and stephanie ripley as well yeah kids need uh individualized supports and so we have kids that may need those for uh academic or behavioral issues yeah. and um you know we've you, we've heard a lot about the opiate okay ad no, I can't even speak. I lost my tongue there for yeah. a second. The opiate crisis. And so we see some of that coming into the school system. I remember public schools are a reflection of our public. Sure. And so those issues come in. Uh, kids had, have had experienced trauma. And we see more of that every day. Yeah. And so we have to give kids those supports. And it may not require a one-on-one -on -one all day, but it means that we might have to do some sort of individualized interventions or additional yeah. instruction. Yeah. And so that that has really uh, that does impact our staffing and that's the the paraeducators are where we have the most openings right now yeah boy it sounds like paras I, I expect really came through maybe especially during the pan pandemic i mean that was that must have been a couple of tough years i mean just with staffing with staffing with, uh, it was tough yeah the teachers really they really took that one and they're you know they've had three years of this of a real reduction of yeah. staffing when you come back, so again, you just talked about the the, law, the learning loss, whatever. Yeah. You feel like you're kind of getting back to kind of where you were before then, or geez, it, we're getting there, but we're not there yet. Is that right? We're getting not there, there but not there yet. No, not there yet. What I see from most of the educational researchers, and I would tend yeah. to agree with them out there. Yeah. We have another five to seven years to pull out of the pandemic from what happened to schools. Is that right? Yeah. Wow. In so my, almost 10 years to kind of fight your way back from fight that? Fight our way back from that. Really? It's going to take that long. Wow. And um, if anyone's saying shorter, I'd like to know how they're thinking we're going to do it. Wow. Um, you know, we're seeing improved student academic scores, but more importantly, we're seeing improved social-emotional scores for our students. Yeah. We have a self-survey for kids from grades 3 through 12 yeah. that talk about, you know, do they have a, a trusted adult? That's how you got do it. They, do they feel you, welcome yeah. in the school? Yeah. And we're getting, we're getting phenomenal scores, and when we look at that, we use a 
common assessment that you use nationwide. Uh -huh. And we're well up in the 75th percentile for the maple run. So, have you been doing that same testing for a while? Are those numbers up? Those numbers are up a little bit. Uh -huh. We changed the survey a little bit this past yeah. year. Um, so we, uh -huh. but the questions we did give um, are are better than they were last year, and they're much better than they were two years ago. Interesting. So, um, you know, the pandemic, we did what we knew best at the time. So I wouldn't second guess any decision. Yeah. But I didn't think we. I don't think we knew the impact we were going to have to stop schooling. Yeah. And it had tremendous impact. Boy, sure, sure sounds like it. Yep. One kind of very different question here. Uh, New York City was much in the news when they finally got some snow, their first snow in a yeah. couple of years, and Eric Adams was getting the mayor, getting uh, some grief, but I guess it, was, it would have been in the old days, a good old snow day. Yeah. But he said, no, we're missing enough school. You're doing remote learning. I'm just curious, are, are there still, not that this winter's uh, produced much. In fact, I guess we're heading no, we've the, had, we've had our warmest meteorological yeah. winter on record. Yeah, so I'm a snow but lover, there, which there, everyone knows around <laughs> around. Now you get in some skiing, I trust, once oh, in a yeah. while? Oh, yeah, once in a while. Once in a while when I can. So are there still real snow days like the old days? There or? still are real snow days in Vermont. <laughs> the, the statutes will not allow us to have remote learning. Oh, oh is that right? Really? Yeah. They'll and not it was, allow it, you to do that. That's right. And so we were able to do that. Huh, even though you were doing that not too well, long ago. Well, during the not. pandemic, it was under the governor's emergency order. Okay. So a lot of laws that, were suspended. And, that, and that's so cool. once that, got, that went away, we can't, according to the no, agency, really. a ruling from the agency, we can't use remote days. In our neighboring state, New Hampshire, yeah. they just run days and they have everyone ready to go. And really? they run a remote day. What do you think of it? Do you think there should, they should be allowing remote learning if you run into issues or mixed emotions? Or? I have mixed emotions about it. I used to be a technology director. That was my first really? administrative job no. back around 2000. Huh. Um, technology is great. I love technology. and I, I'm using my iPhone and my computer and all the different apps. Yeah. But nothing beats a highly qualified teacher yeah. in the same space with you. And it's not just you. Because the collective teaching that goes on between 18, 24 students, yeah. that's the power in the classroom. Yeah. So one day, two days remote, okay. Yeah. I wouldn't want to go anywhere back. Now, for some students, don't get me wrong, for yeah. some students, and we have a couple, yeah. remote works better than being in the classroom. Yeah. But there are other things sure. in that background. But, but that's a pretty significant minority. I mean, most, most, most kids, kids do a lot that, better in that the That relationship that, you know, sure. we get to, you and I are getting to do across this table right now. Yeah. We're getting 100% communication. Yeah. Even though we might do it over Zoom or Google Meets, whatever yeah. technology you want, yeah. you still can't communicate as completely as we can in person. Yeah. And what, communication is the rock of education. Yeah. School board meetings, you get some members of the public typically. You don't, I, I would guess not, not too many. Do some folks show up? Or? We get some. Um, it's been pretty sparse. Um, we had a couple this past meeting yeah. that were showed up in person. We've been doing hybrid meetings. We didn't have to, but there's a bill in the legislature to require it. We just keep doing it. Um, because it does bring people. And I mean, people, hybrid, so people can zoom in. If zoom in if they want. Do you and, know how many people do zoom in, or you had no, no clue about that? Well, so here's what I do know is that we have a uh, few up there that are staff that come regularly, yeah. and then the, uh, a bunch of the administrators come regularly that way. Uh, yeah. And so uh, when I look up at the screen, when, I can, when I'm not concentrating on the board, yeah. um, I might see two, three people. Huh. That I don't know the names of, yeah. and it's you know they're just the names in Zoom, so yeah. I don't see any so, faces. So not not a lot of folks. Not a lot of folks. Um, I don't know. You made an effort. You certainly have. Didn't you have a, a number of public kind of? Oh yeah, uh, no. That, well, that's that's out? that that's something. Another one of those things we should talk about is our strategic plan yeah. and our goals. Strategic and we've had plan. we've had great effort from our community uh, in building our goal district goals. Huh. And so from those district goals. Um, we've had the community has come out this year and we just had a meeting last night on it um, where people are coming and helping us write our five-year strategic plan for Maple huh. Run. Has that been something, uh, is that a, a normal thing, a five-year strategic so plan? You go for, anywhere from three to five years. Yeah. And I think a five-year one is when we, we started to look at the goals yeah. and I talked with the board about this. I said, hmm. these goals are pretty big. So I don't think they're really a three-year plan. I think they're more like a five-year plan. Uh, and that's being worked on? You're working yeah, on that actually, now? Yeah, we actually, the first draft went to the design committee last night. And in March, we'll have a public meeting where people that attended uh, our public forum 
back in December can yeah. come back and say, so you gave us all this input. Trust Do you them. see it in the plan? Yeah. And there may be significant changes. Uh, I mean, I'm sure there are changes. But there are changes, but I think, it's, um, I think it's changes we would have made anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, one of the big things is, is back to I said, schools are being asked to do more and more things yeah. uh, for services for families and students. Yeah. And I would say uh, three of the five goals really focus on additional services. Additional services. Additional services that wouldn't yeah. have been when I was in school. And yeah, I'm yeah. a high school graduate of 85. Wow. So, you know, it's just, it, it's what the expectations of our community are. Wow. When I hear additional services, I think, boy, is that going to be more and more, more money? This isn't going to be... Uh, I don't know that it's more money. Not I think necessarily. It's, I think it's, it's more configuration. Yeah. Uh, one of them, for sure, is provide support services <clears throat> to students and families so we can individualize... Uh, they're learning through flexible pathways. I don't, I don't have it all quoted right. Yeah. Um, but that goal is really about partnering with outside agencies yeah. and making sure families know what are the services that you can avail yourself of yeah. to have uh, so your student's ready to come into school that yeah. day. I think I'm going back, I think you touched on this one. Again, I'm going back 20 years in my case, a couple of years as a peer at SATAC, individual education plans or? Yeah, IEPs. IEPs. So how, those how are students. Percentage are, of students who have an IEP, r we're, roughly? We're in the uh, low 20s. Low 20s, so, so, so about a fifth of yep. the students. Yeah, and then we have, there are three different types of plans in education, so okay. the individual education plans. Yeah. Then there's, uh, so that's for students who need an individual education plan to support their needs to reach the educational goals. Um. Then we have what's called Section 504, which is for a medical disability. Um. And we have plans that can be created there to support students that have medical needs. Um. And then um, in Vermont, we have what's called an education support team, EST plan, um. uh, which says a kid needs some extra instruction. And how do we do that? And all those partner with the parents and partner with the student uh, and teachers and say, how do we help the student meet the, ac you know, the academic rigor targets that we're setting for them? Wow. How gen general question, parents or do you think are more parents more into paying attention, the attention they should be paying to their kids these days or fewer parents or, you know, kind of a pretty I, broad I, question? Yeah, I, that's a hard one to answer. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's sure nice when that happens, obvi it, it, obviously. Well, anytime, well, I'll say it this way. Anytime we can partner with a family, yeah. it's going to benefit the kid. Sure. It's going to benefit the kid all the time. Yeah. So we, that's one of our other goals in there is, yeah. is creating those family partnerships, which we know we should do. Yeah. And to have two-way conversations, that's why we're doing the strategic plan, yeah. with the community. Yeah. Not just say, tell us what you think, and then go off in the corner and produce it. Yeah, we're bringing they're along the, with the journey for us to produce it. And then they'll be along each year to say, so you told us this is the goal. This is what we're saying, right. how our progress is, how are we doing? Right. And you're in the flyer that I kind of read. Uh, yeah. You know, I think you got into that pretty well. There's a reference to um, what final year of the envisioning plan. Envisioning plan. So that was it? required of the pandemic when. Oh, really? With all the covid funds huh. um, that we had to create. It was pretty much a generic template around Vermont, and it was yeah. around three key areas, which was student well-being and social-emotional learning. That was one. Yeah. Two was um, safety, health and safety. No, I'm sorry. I've got it wrong. The second one, so I'm doing this from No, memory, that's okay. That's fine. Um, was academic rigor. And I'm forgetting the third one that's right okay. now, top of my head. But that's the last. We're but that last was pan year. pandemic related. Yeah, and it was how you had to submit this plan to be able to use the funds that we talked about that yeah. are going away. And so in Maple Run, we created this plan, and actually we've made quite a bit of movement on that plan. Huh. We were actually looking at it the other day on our Gantt chart, how far we've come. There's still parts of that that are going to roll over in the strategic plan because we weren't right. able to complete it. Yeah. Down to about three minutes. Anything um, if anything we haven't talked about you want to jump into? you got a few more minutes. Any? I, I covered, just want to cover a lot of ground. Yeah, no, we have a great community here in St. Albans, and I know, um, I know that people – value their kids and value their kids' education. Yeah. And uh, that's one of the things that keeps me coming back every day. I, I haven't yeah. met anyone that said, hey, we don't value kids and in and, and their education. And to me, yeah. like, how can you not work with anyone that way? Yeah. Like, yeah, we value that. For Okay, let's start there. 
And it sounds like it's been a very supportive community for yep. education. Again, you yeah. know your budgets have passed, but boy, I just think dollar figures, there's just some sticker shock that seems are, to be moving yep. in, yep. And I, I think, understandably more these days. And, and I know I'm going to see it in my community. I've seen what the proposed yeah. tax rate is. So, no, I, yeah. And, and, and this is pretty common. I mean, I know districts are up 40, 50 wow. percent with wow. the CLA. So wow. it's, it, it's, it's going to be it's going to be an interesting tax tax season this year. Yeah. And again, boards, and also you're hoping for uh, you can you know find a couple more board members. We'll find a couple out there. board members. We usually yeah. do. Um, yeah. We've had people who've applied in the past, and, yeah. um, and so I think we will. It's what I, I I said this the other night because this month is board school board appreciation month. Oh yeah. So I said it on Wednesday, and I truly mean it. Um, we have a great team on our board, and they are very deliberate in their thinking, and uh, they question well which they should. They question yeah. myself. They question other administrators. Yeah. That's part of their monitoring role. Yeah. Uh, but then they provide guidance. And then they step back and say, so tell us how we're going to get there. Yeah. And that I can't ask any more of a board. That's, it's just a tremendous team. So. Um, you talked to other supers. Uh, pretty much similar issues here. Are some other districts getting into just very different issues and needs? Or no, not, they're pretty, pretty, pretty similar. They're pretty yeah. similar. I talked to here in Vermont, Franklin County, and New England. Yeah. And we're all kind of facing the same issues. Yeah. Um, we're all facing kids with more and more needs. Uh, and it's, it's right. not necessarily more kids, but the needs are more severe. Yeah. And so we have to find ways of meeting them. And that outside agencies have lost capacity to support those. Really? So it, so it just sounds like, and I guess probably everybody knows, it's just kind of the school, schools just have more to deal with. They have more, more to on deal their with. Shoulders yep. And yep. So, you, so some of the outside help that schools used to get just isn't there anymore. It's just not there anymore. Really? And that, that's happened uh, for a myriad of reasons. Yeah. Um, you know, they have the same stra staffing struggles we do. Yeah. We've had schools that we've partnered with for students, and they're no longer wow. operating. Wow. So. On that note, we'll call it a day. Yeah. Uh, Bill Campbell, the superintendent of the Maple Run Unified School District, really appreciate the time. You covered a lot of ground. Good for me and good for our viewers. And again, Marchtown Meeting Day is not far away, folks. Yeah. Thanks to producer Alan Cunningham for doing a lot of the hard work back there. And we appreciate you watching us here on Northwest Access TV. I'm Richard Coverthwaite. See you next time.